And so here they are. The people of Israel camped in the plain of Moab. It's been a long, long journey through the wilderness these 40 years. And finally, they're here. They're ready to cross that Jordan River and experience the bounty of the land of Canaan. Moses, again, won't go with them. But he has some things to say to them. And in essence, he says, watch closely and remember. Remember all the wonderful things that God has done for you all your journey. Never forget your rich history and the bounty of God's presence with you. Well, on this celebration of our history, this celebration of our 172 years, we too are called to remember. We too are asked not to forget all the ways that God has blessed this church these many, many years. And so as a call to remembrance, I want to share with you this morning five insights. First of all, we stand on the shoulders of so many faithful people. You and I stand on the shoulders of so many, many faithful people. Again, we'll recognize at 11 o'clock the longest serving living members of this congregation. There are 14 of them. As I said earlier, all of them will be here. Reverend Dub Nance will be here. But they're simply reflective of so many people, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people who have given time and talents, gifts and resources, prayers, energy, commitment to the life of this congregation all these years. They're simply reflective of so many people who've helped this church be what she is today. Jim Thrash and I were talking this week about this Sunday and and, uh, about some of his remembrances. And by the way, Jim will be uh, 24 years on staff here this coming July. So he's the longest serving living staff member. Well, I, by the way, I happened to go out into the, to the vestibule uh, yesterday and I was perusing some of the history material there and I saw a 1991 church directory. And so I opened the directory and I started flipping through it and I saw this picture of this really young guy. And I looked under it and it said choir director Jim Thrash. And I looked at the picture again I thought about the Jim Thrash I know, and I, that can't be that guy. <laughs> sort of reminded me of when I went back to St. Paul Church. Some of you know that I was the founding pastor of St. Paul Methodist Church in Cordova in 1988, and they invited me back for the 20th celebration of that congregation in 2008. That church has a wall of the clergy who've served that congregation as the founding pastor. When you walk, literally walk in the door of the church, they're on the wall of the pictures, and they're, and they're large pictures, and mine is, mine is the first one. For one thing, at that time, I had a mustache. But I went back, and I preached the, the 20th year celebration, and I know, because that congregation had changed a lot over the years, there were a bunch of folks sitting out there thinking to themselves, how in the world could that guy I'm listening to be that guy on the wall? But Jim and I were talking about the OLA, the Owens Life Enrichment Center. Jim came here, and, uh, uh, and within the second or third week that he was here, they broke ground for the Owens Life and Richens Center. Now, you know across this street, across West Street, is that marvelous recreational facility. You know that. But not everyone knows what was there before 1989. Jim says he remembers within the second or third week of coming here that they broke ground. He said you had to literally walk through a jungle. It was a vacant lot. The foliage had grown up. Now, Jim admits that he came from Iowa. And he said, in Iowa, you can see from one end to the other. So he admits that that, uh, it might have been just some high foliage. To him, it was a jungle. But he did say they had to make a path through the foliage on that vacant lot in order to break ground at a magnolia tree for that marvelous facility that sits across the street and that for over 20 years now has served countless people in their physical and spiritual well-being. And this church has so much of that history, 
So many people who prayed, so many people who sought God's will, so many people who dedicated resources, so many people who gave time that the next program might occur, the next staff member might be hired, the next building might be built, and you and I stand on their shoulders, and I hope you know how privileged you are. I know I'm privileged to stand on the shoulders of that long list of senior pastors who've served this church. I am so privileged, but so are you. Secondly, I would say that we recognize the depth of spiritual growth which has taken place in the life of this congregation. The depth of spiritual growth that's gone on over these many years. I think most of you know the name Robert Fulgham. He is author of several books, but the most noted one and the one that got uh, him uh, uh, famous and familiar was titled, All I Ever Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Most of you know that book. And he writes in that book that all he really didn't know, really needed to know about how to live, what to do, and how to be, I learned in kindergarten. And he gives examples like this of the things he learned in kindergarten that affect his life positively. Share everything, play fair, don't hit people, clean up your own mess, say you're sorry when you hurt somebody, warm cookies and cold milk are good for you, Live a balanced life, learn some and think some, and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon, and I underline that one. <laughs> when you go out in the world, watch for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. Be aware of wonder. Goldfish and hamsters and white mice and even the little seed in the styrofoam cup, they all die, so do we. Everything I ever needed to know for life, I learned in kindergarten. Well, I don't believe there's anyone in this congregation this morning who can say that every spiritual truth you needed in your life, you learned here. I don't believe there's anyone who can say that, that all the momentous spiritual moments of your life occurred here at Germantown United Methodist Church. I don't believe there's anyone who can say that the high spiritual mountaintop experiences of your life all occurred right here at Germantown United Methodist Church. But we can say this we can say that thousands of people have been touched for Jesus Christ right here. We can say that thousands of people have been enriched spiritually right here. We can say that thousands of people have found comfort and strength in God's divine presence right here. We can say that large numbers have been transformed into discipleship right here. Literally, in 1840, when this congregation started, 45 members, and I'll speak more about that in a moment, 45 members, we're almost 4,000 now. Many have come and gone. That means that thousands of people found here the love of God. Thousands of people found here the call of Jesus Christ. Thousands of people found here the power of the Holy Spirit. And we say that humbly. Thirdly, I would say to you, we celebrate our Methodist heritage. Again, 1840, look at your history. 1840, 45 people, 45 Methodists in that little city about which Linda spoke, Germantown, little Germantown, Tennessee then, decided to build a church. You know, they decided Methodists ought to have a foothold here. Methodists ought to have a foothold, a spiritual foothold in Germantown, Tennessee. So they bought land, Church Street, and they built that first frame building. Now, we don't claim to be the only church. We Methodists don't say that we're better than Baptists or Presbyterians or Catholics or Episcopalians or Lutherans or Evangelicals. We never make that claim. But on the other side, we should not apologize for being United Methodists. I'm thankful that, 45, that, that in 1840, 45 people believed that Methodism was worth planning in Germantown, Tennessee, and they built a church to prove it. I think you know that the founders of Methodism were John and Charles Wesley. But I'm not sure that many of you know this. Over the 53 years that John Wesley preached and, and witnessed and evangelized, listen to this, he rode 250,000 miles on horseback and he preached over 40,000 sermons. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, 
preached over 40,000 sermons in 53 years, rode over 250,000 miles on horseback. Why? Because he believed the love of God should be shared with everybody. He believes the truth of Holy Scripture should be shared with everybody. He believed the saving work of Jesus Christ should be shared with everybody. He believed that calling people to a holy life and discipleship is something that ought to happen in, German, in, 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 in the, the country of England and we believe ought to happen here. We're not the only true church, but we should stand tall that we are United Methodists who believe that the love of God, the power of Holy Scripture, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the call to discipleship should be planted. Then, now, and in the future. Fourthly, I would say to you, we continue to serve passionately in outreach and mission. Mentioning Wesley again, one of his mantras, as you so well know, was this. Do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can and all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as you ever can. That's a great call, isn't it? Do all the good you can in all the ways you can to all the people you can and all the places you can as long as ever you can. You know, I'm proud of this church. This church has such a wonderful self-giving spirit. I believe that started way back then. I've been in ministry for over 40 years. I've pastored, uh, this is my ninth uh, appointment as a full-time pastor in the United Methodist Church. And I want to say to the people of Germantown United Methodist Church, I have never pastored a more self-giving congregation in mission and outreach than this church. I am thankful that you believe, and they believed way back then, that it's one thing to gather here in worship, it's one thing to gather in Bible study and Sunday school, it's another thing to go out in the world and take care of the disadvantaged and minister to the hurting and reach out to those on the periphery of society and embrace the lonely and the forgotten. But you've done that. You've done that in this city. You've done that in Shelby County. You've done that regionally. You've done it nationally. You've done it globally. Thanks be to God for that. But now listen to me. It doesn't stop here. That same witness must continue to be a part of who we are as Christ servants in Germantown United Methodist Church. May the passion never cease to feed the hungry, as Christ said to bring drink to the thirsty, to take in the stranger, to bring clothes to those who have no clothes, to visit the sick, and to visit the imprisoned. And finally, I would say to you this morning, we look to the future prayerfully and expectantly. I read recently about a man who came across, uh, he was visiting an antique shop. He loved to, to shop in various antique shops. And in this particular antique shop, he found a brick. And it was a gold-colored brick. And he was always looking for something unusual in antique shops. True story. He found a brick, this gold-colored brick. And on the brick were these words. On this site in 1872, nothing happened. <laughs> this gorgeous brick. In this antique show, store, and, and the brick literally said, on this site in 1872, nothing happened. My friends, I hope someday no one finds a brick, a gold-colored brick, which has these words. On this site of Germantown United Methodist Church, From 2012 on, nothing new happened. What a tragedy that would be, wouldn't it? And if it weren't on a brick, that it was the witness in the community. That on this site, from 2012 on, as we remembered our history, nothing new for the kingdom of God happened. God isn't done with us and He's not done dreaming for us and He's not done expecting us to catch the vision of a different future for the sake of the kingdom.
So thanks be to God for these 172 years. We need to remember that we stand on the shoulders of so many who've given so much. We need to thank God for the vast spiritual growth that's occurred in the life of this congregation. We need to properly celebrate our Methodist heritage. We need to continue to be an energetic people in mission and outreach. And we need to go forth into the future ever seeking faithfully who God wants us to be now and for the future. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of dedication.